Hi, this is PDF Brochure Arcade at brochurearcade.com and this is tutorial 193. Now we had just started making our new game settings and we've got it uh, skeletoned out of the functions. I've gone ahead and added some comments to some of them because I've started to, but uh, let's just dive in and start off. Okay, I'm not going to do anything with the constructor yet as I can't think of anything I need to do, but it is still there if I do need it for later on. Uh, let's just start off by setting up the save hair color and uh, save hair mesh. So I'm going to go into game setting, well, not game setting, I want the actual script I'm using to display on screen. And it really doesn't matter, I'll, we'll take this one here. So I have an on GY function now. I could move these up to the top and I probably should. Let's do that. First off. Gonna come up to the top, they're private, so I'm just gonna throw them right here. Just to keep all my variables together. And here's where we have our on GUI. And looking through here, I'm gonna want it after this. So I'm gonna create a button. So let's just start out by positioning it. And we'll want a new rec. I'll fill that out in a minute and I'm just going to want to say save. Oh, we'll just say next, which is actually going to save our uh, character customization parts. And I want to position it right up, you know, in the bottom right hand corner. So we'll just say screen dot width. Uh, minus the width of this button. I'm going to make it uh, probably 50 should be good enough. And well, I guess we're going to add a bit of offset, and I think I might have added an offset up here. If I did not, I could add one, but I want a 5 pixel offset, so I'm going to say 55. And then we'll do screen height. And I want it to be, let's say it's 50 wide, so let's do uh, 25 high, and of course the 5 pixel offset. So that's 30, and then the actual size. I'm just going to stick a colon at the end, and we'll start it up just to see if uh, it's positioned right. Now you notice I've turned some of the other GUI elements off. Uh, let me just adjust this a bit. We'll go full screen. I've turned some of the other GUI elements off, and that's just because I'm starting to clean things up for putting things on the screen the way I want them. And actually, I do want it a bit bigger, but for now, uh, it, it works. So let's add a if block to it so we can actually start doing things with it. And let me unmaximize and just take a look here to make sure it's. You can still get to it. These are kind of in the way, but not too bad. And to be honest, I'm actually going to turn them off. I believe I have those attached to my camera. I don't want to unattach it because I'm not sure if I hard cast those values into the actual script itself and I do want to save them. There we go. So all I really want is my next and I could even comment out the hair but I just want the next to show up. So let's add our little if block here. And I'm just going to call a new function. And I'm going to call this function, uh, let's make it private. It does not return anything. I'm just going to say save customizations. And I'll just call that function up here. Okay, and here is where we're going to start accessing, accessing the, the static values. So I'm going to start off with uh, save hair color. So we've called the script game settings 2. So we don't have a reference to it, but we don't need one now. And we'll see it right there, game settings 2 dot save uh, hair color we're going to start with. And we'll notice here that it takes an int so we'll want to get the index of the hair from here. So looks like we have our instance of the hair class is hair 
dot and it should be hair color index uh, or selected hair color let me just go in and check just to make sure that's right I usually call them indexes but uh, yeah that is right so we're at the top here oops and I didn't mean to scroll in that class I want to go to this one and let's actually go over to this method and we'll just do a debug log here to see what's happening and all we're going to do is pass in the index which we're getting passed in here and it should tell us so let's start it up I'm just going to clear over here and oh, we're actually doing the color and I've actually got it set up to tell me the debug logs of the colors I can turn that off now but let's just hit next uh, I'm on black it should be zero there we go uh, let's try yellow it should be one or blonde I guess I call it and you can see it goes all the way through you can test them all if you want it should work so how are we going to set this up uh, I got a lot of questions last time we were going through saving and loading uh, people were getting the, the strings wrong uh, if we take a look here uh, the way we were saving the names uh, people weren't typing them in the same for the save and the load so I decided to come up to the top in this one and I'm gonna make a list of constants and we can just reference all of these from the constants so I'm gonna start off up here and I don't see a reason to make them public so we'll just make them uh, private and they are type, type string and I guess we'll call this one uh, well hair color and I'm just well let's we'll actually type it out and we'll come down here we'll actually start creating the string I want it to be quite similar to the ones that we already have so let's just pick one uh, one without variables so here we go this is actually when we're loading it up. Uh, let's see where we're actually saving it. Uh, we were saving our character name, right? Yeah, right here. Uh, we actually want an int though, so we are going to have to pick one with a variable. That's fine. I'm just going to copy this in. And I'll just come in, paste it in, tab it in. Now we're going to want to set an int and this is just like before we have a key and then we're gonna have the value and the value is what we're passed in the index and the key will just be that the constant we set up top and then in our load uh, let's go over and take a look at our load it's been a while since I've looked at this script, so I just want to see how I was doing things. I assume I wasn't doing anything very special, but yeah, it's right here. So we actually want to return what comes out. So we'll come in, and I'm just going to paste it up here for now. Whoops, I went into the comments. And get int the key to the int well, I'm just going to erase it all the key to the int we want is hair color and I, actually I think that's all it takes is just the key name let me just check yes it does uh, and you can assign a value if uh, for default which I will uh, so load hair right down here so if there for some reason there is no value stored I'm gonna say make it zero which will will be black or whatever color you have set as your your first one in the list and of course we actually want to return this there we go so let's actually test this out um, well here let's debug out exactly what's supposed to be put in there so we're going to debug out, uh, well, let's put that in. I'm going to put a plus. And 
actually I'm going to put a colon in between them. So it should tell us the string that it saves it under, which you know should just be this, a colon, and then the index. And then we'll go ahead and take a look. So let's just start it up. We'll hit clear. Uh, let's pick a different color. Let's try red. We'll hit next. And it should come out hair color, then have a value of four. So I'm going to go into finder, and I can't remember exactly where this saves, to be honest. Uh, probably under users, uh, the name of the person, maybe library, preferences. Yeah, that looks like that's where it's saved. I'm going to have to expand this a bit to see all the different names. And this is the one I'm playing right here. So I'm going to load that up. It loads up into Xcode, and here we go. Hair color. Uh, type, number, value 4. Uh, I haven't actually played around with Xcode 4 too much, so I'm not sure why it's loading all this up as well. I used to like it better when it just loaded up into a plist uh, reader. But it seems like Xcode now. But anyway, so that's exactly what we wanted, and this here is automatically added by Unity. So let's close that down. I'm actually going to leave this window open. I'm just going to minimize it. And I'm going to go back into Mono Develop and I'm going to add a load function to our uh, game settings. Uh, so not game setting, player model customization. Now this obviously doesn't need to be here. I just want it here for testing. Uh, so private void load, uh, I'm just going to say settings. And all I'm going to do is just use this to test uh, while seeing what got saved. Just make sure it loads up right. And it should, but we'll just test it. And I called it uh, load hair color. And I actually didn't pass it in anything, right? And I did not. So it should actually return a 4 or the integer that we have stored there. Uh, so let's actually debug log this out. And I'm going to put a string on just in front of it. And I'm just going to say saved value. And then we'll just close it off. I'm going to actually call it up here. So after it's done saving it, I'm going to go ahead and load it. And just to make sure that it loads up right. So we'll go back into Unity. I'll start the substance. There's no errors. I'll hit clear. And let's take gray this time. I'll hit next. Uh, hair color. So this is what gets saved. The index and its value. And the saved value is 5. So we know it's working right. So let's try switching over to red. There we go. And of course you go through and test all of these. Uh, not much to it. As you can see, it's pretty easy, and I think by using our constants up here, uh, let me just scroll over, it should cut down a lot of uh, the typos people are having. Uh, but we'll go through and fill the rest of these out. Since we've got the basic structure already set up, it shouldn't really be too hard. The next few tutorials uh, we're going to be going through is getting a reference to all the different uh, body parts that we have hooked up, and we'll save them off. At least all the ones I currently have hooked up. So we have what the the body type, uh, the hair mesh, uh, and the scale, and all the rest of the body parts that you're using exact same way. Like uh, you're probably not going to have all the exact same body parts set up as I do, but you should. As you can see, this this is pretty easy. We can actually comment out this debug log statement. So it's one line of code, pretty much in all these functions. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.